Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to write Newton's second law equations for systems that have a, a significant rotational uh, components. So what we're looking at here, we've got a system here, we've got a mass right here, mass A, a mass B, uh, connected to this pulley system. Again, this pulley we're going to say has a significant mass here, which I'm going to write off to the left, mass P. And what we're going to do is try to draw free body diagrams of the different parts of the system and write equations that would allow us to find the acceleration of the system, this tension that I have labeled uh, T1 and this tension that I have labeled T2. So again, we're going to imagine the system starts from rest and is released. Um, if mass B is bigger than mass A, then this mass should accelerate down, this mass should accelerate up, and the pulley should have a rotational acceleration. So I'm going to go ahead and start this with mass A here. And, you know, first thing I'm going to do is clone it, All right? And then I'm going to use this to draw my free body. So i get this, put somewhere else here, move this up here. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting force vectors on that mass. Okay, so we know that we're going to have a gravitational force down and in addition to that we're going to have a tension up and that's the tension I'm calling T1 so my free body that might look something like this there's my tension T1 there's my mg not sure had a little extra stuff there I don't really need okay and those are the only forces that I can think of uh, acting on mass one. If we throw out uh, air drag and the gravitational force between mass A and the moon and all other planets, you know, these are the two big ticket relevant forces. Right? Now what we do is we write a Newton's second law equation for the free body. Sum of all forces equals MA. St my standard rule of thumb for direction is to identify the acceleration direction, call that positive. So this mass is accelerating up. So I'm going to go ahead and put up positive. When we write our Newton's second law equation for that free body, we're going to have T1 minus mg equals ma. Now, there's three different masses in this problem. We've got a uh, pulley and then mass A and mass B. This is mass A, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little subscript on those masses. Now, i got to kind of glance that equation over. Notice it's got two unknowns. We don't know the tension T1. We don't know the acceleration, so we move on. Let's go ahead and take a look at mass B here. And again, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, clone that mass. All right, move that off to the side. Maybe right here is good enough. I'm going to go ahead and draw a free body for it. So for mass B, the gravitational force is down. The tension which is the tension I'm calling T2, is up on mass B. So we've got tension T2, tension, oops, and the weight, mass B times G, and that's pretty well it. There's no other forces acting on mass B. I'm going to go ahead and write a Newton's second law equation for that mass. Sum of all forces equals MA. Now, uh, remember, standard rule of thumb, identify the acceleration direction, call that positive. Mass B is accelerating down, so I'm going to go ahead and call down positive when I write this equation. So now this one is going to be the positive vector, plus M sub B G minus tension 2 equals M sub B A. There's my Newton's second law equation for this mass. Now. This presumably has two unknowns, unknown tension, unknown acceleration. And it's a different tension than before. This was T1, this is T2. So there's three, there's three unknowns we're looking at right now, T1, A, and T2. So we need to write another equation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And this, the other equation is going to come from the pulley now. So I'm going to take a moment here and... Uh, clone that pulley if I can. <clears throat> so I'm going to copy this. Give myself a picture of that pulley. Now, 
um, the pulley, you know, this is supposed to be a bar or something holding the pulley, and that's not actually going to be part of my free body. So I'm going to, you know, the free body is going to be of the pulley. So I'm going to try to get rid of the bar. Humor me, it'll just take a moment. I think I can do that like this. Okay, that's probably close enough. Get rid of as much of this as we can. And again, because the free body is of just the pulley. Now, draw the free body. We've got to start uh, putting force vectors in. And since this is already uh, lined up fairly nicely to uh, put the gravitational force, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to have a gravitational force down. Oops. Oh, color. There we go. All right. So there's a line up with the arrow on in a minute. The pin is supporting this pulley. So that's going to put a force up on that pulley. I'm, I'm going to call it F sub P for pin, but if you want to call it a normal force, that's perfectly fine. This force vector is going to be a little larger than I got room to make it because it's got to equal the sum of these three. Um, I guess I've already got lines for these vectors. We're going to have a tension T2 down over here and a tension T1 up. So I guess I don't need this anymore. Now what I'm going to do is take a moment and talk relative lengths here. Tension 2 has to be bigger than tension 1. So I'm going to shorten that up a little bit. I know this because the acceleration is clockwise. The pin has to equal the sum of these three force vectors because this thing's not accelerating up or down. So I'm just going to you know, change the length of some of these here to make my free body be as reasonably accurate as possible. So now, right, here's the force at the pin. Acting down is the tension T2. Acting down on the left is the tension T1. And then this one right here is the gravitational force vector mg. Keep in mind that it's mass of the pin times g. So one of the things when you're drawing a free body, I don't usually get a, a, a ruler out uh, and try to make things as perfectly to scale as possible, but I, it, it, you know, you should at least take some time to consider which vectors are bigger than which. So you know, when I drew a free body of mass a, you'll notice that tension one is longer than than the mg, and that's because mass A is accelerating up. While I'm at it, I should have a subscript on that A right there. Right? When I drew a free body of mass B, you'll notice that I drew the gravitational force vector, the mg, longer than tension 2. That's because I know that mass B is accelerating down. Uh, over here, I drew tension 2 bigger than tension 1 because I know the acceleration, the angular acceleration is clockwise. And you know what I haven't done is actually kind of scaled them between them. You know, in this picture, I got tension two is bigger than tension one, just barely, but uh, it is bigger. But you'll notice that uh, you know the lengths have changed. And you know, when you're drawing free bodies, um, it's okay to have kind of a varying scale as you go up and down. You know, the the we don't know tensions one and two anyway, and um, just at least within the free body itself, try to get the one, get try to get the relative vectors within the free bodies uh, done. You know, try to figure out if you know which ones are longer, make them so in your free body. But don't worry about you know every little detail going through the entire system. Anyway, all right, I'm going to go ahead now and start writing equations. So, you know, if we talk about the kinetic parts of the free bodies, mass A is accelerating up, mass B is accelerating down. And the pulley has a rotational acceleration, an alpha. So the equation I'm going to write for the pulley is a torque equation, or a moment equation. Sum of all torques equals I alpha. Now, I'm summing torques about the center, and there's no kinetic terms like ma times distances because uh, the center mass isn't moving or isn't accelerating, and I'm summing about the centers anyway. I'm going to go ahead and call it clockwise positive. So summing torques about the center, the pulley force is not going to show up in that equation because it goes right through the center. Same thing with the mg. What we are going to have is tension 2 times r. That torque is going to be positive because I've got uh, clockwise positive and this tension 2 creates clockwise torque. Tension 1 also creating torque. So we're going to have tension 1 times the distance r. Again, that's that distance. The torque created by tension 1 is negative because tension 1 makes this pulley want to rotate counterclockwise, and I've got clockwise positive. Okay. Equals, 
Now at this point I'm going to take care of this right here. The I is the moment of inertia of this disk or dish, disk shaped objects. So that's going to be a one half mass of the pulley times radius squared times alpha, the angular acceleration of the pulley. So at this point we have three equations. One, two, three. As we glance it over though now I've got four unknowns. Tension one, acceleration, tension two, and the angular acceleration. So at this point it's not quite solvable yet. But there's another nice short equation we can write if we think about the uh, kinematics of the problem. If I look over here at this picture, the acceleration of mass B is down. Right? The acceleration of mass B is the same as the acceleration of any point along that string up to that point right there. And that acceleration can be written R times the angular acceleration, alpha. And there's our fourth equation right here. So this system can in theory be solved. I'm not going to take the time to do it in the video, but I mean, here's what we you could or would do. You can solve that for alpha, it's equal to A over R. So in this spot right there, you'd be putting A over R. Then you could, um, you know, maybe solve this equation for T1, sub that here. Solve this equation for T2, sub that here. You'll get a system of equations and the only unknown, I'm sorry, you'll get a single equation and the only unknown will be the acceleration uh, of the system. And then once you have A, you can uh, go back over here to get the angular acceleration. So uh, the point of this video was how to write the equations. You know, I'll save the algebra for another time. Hope this video helps. Have a great day.